Okay, warm good morning to all. Today's webinar on Introduction to Robotics is jointly organized by Department of Physics and Innovation and Entrepreneurship Development Center. The session will be recorded for the documentation purpose. Please keep your audio and video in the off mode during the session. The questions, if any, can be asked during the interactive session. We will start the meeting with a silent prayer. Thank you. Now I invite Ms. Anne Veniza of SDC Physics and student coordinator of this program for the welcome address. Over to you, Anne. Good morning, everyone. It's a moment of great privilege and honor for me to extend a hearty welcome to all of you today. We all have heard about robotics, right? Today, we have our resource person, Dr. Johan Sani, assistant professor at Sanigrid College of Engineering to talk about the future introduction to robotics. About his education, he done his PhD and MS program in Drexel University at Drexel University in Biomedical Engineering. He done his BSc in Electronics and Biomedical Engineering from Cochin University of Science and Technology. That's not all. He done his postdoctoral research from University of Michigan and Drexel University. Now he is a teacher at Sanigat College as, uh, and working as an assistant professor. Uh, next, about his area of interest in research are transducers, therapeutic ultrasound, ultrasound transducers, and it goes on. Sir, I welcome you to the session. Now, I welcome the faculty coordinator, Dr. Sheena Savior, HOD, and IQAC coordinator, and Danya Joseph. Welcome, ma'am. And the IDC coordinators, Dr. Revadi and Ms. Sharina John, to the session. And I welcome my co student coordinator, Amruta Lakshmi, to the session. I also extend a warm welcome. All my, to all my dear friends. And once again, a warm welcome all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so I guess um, this is gonna take some time. So without any further uh, ado, let me get straight out of the presentation. I hope you can see the presentation as it is. Um, so basically, uh, I was supposed to give you a very uh, brief, and um, you know introductory session on robotics so uh, what i'm gonna try and do is introduce you to the world of robotics and hopefully you know you'll learn something in the process and you'll also hopefully you know remove some misconceptions about robotics in the process that is what i hope to accomplish with this uh, this is again like i said going to be a very basic introduction so you will obviously hear a lot of things that you already know but um if you don't uh, you know uh, uh, please try and learn something from it. Uh, like I said, it's not going to be an in-depth technical session or anything. It's just going to be a very um, introductory session on uh, robotics. Okay. So, um, what is a robot? Uh, that is that is the first thing we should kind of understand, and that is where a lot of misconceptions about robotics itself comes in. So there are many many definitions out there for uh, what robotics is. Um, the first and foremost thing is a lot of our concepts about robotics comes from movies unfortunately so in popular literature a robot is a machine resembling a human being able to do human things and movements and functions and all that that is one of the most broader definitions of robots that, that is out there although it doesn't necessarily have to be true a robot can also be defined as an electromechanical device that is programmable, multifunctional, sensible for the environment. In that, what you have to realize is that it is sensible for the environment. It interacts with the environment. It can be, you know, it can be used in an environment. It can function in that environment. That is what it is. And then it's a physically embodied artificial intelligent device with sensing and actuation. So um, what I want you to take and get from all this is that it, there is not just one way to look at what a robot is. There are so many different ways. But unfortunately, our, um, our concept of robots is very limited in a lot of ways. Um, uh, let me let me give you some very brief history about robotics which will hopefully give you a sense of what this field actually is okay so uh, one of the first recorded instances of a robot 
in any in the in the in, a, in the broader sense of the world not in the possibly in the way we understand it today but in a broader sense of the world one of the very first robots it was introduced or was seen in history in around 2050 so it's long long time ago about 8th centuries ago where a bishop albertus magnus uh, had a banquet and he had this robotic machine serving things so if you think about it um, um you know i'm i'm sure you've heard the news there are you know robots in some restaurants that is serving food there's some something in a lot of foreign countries or also something that recently came up somewhere in kerala where they have robotic servers and what i want you to understand is those are all just you know attention grabbing media stunts nothing more because that sort of a robot serving people things that was already invented back in 2050 so um that is how old this concept is so even back then with such limited technology and all those things we had basic robo people were able to build these basic things so but back then you know this was considered sorcery and you know one of those uh, guests destroyed the robot and then again in 1640 descartes rene descartes he built a female robotic companion which he, which he called the mafille franci which basically means um, you know french girl little french girl Uh, so he made this and took it on a voyage again uh, if you read the sentence it says uh, that also was considered some sort of sorcery and the robot was thrown overboard uh, from the ship that he was traveling in so back then these sort of things were seen with a lot of skepticism then as we go along uh, in what 1738 a guy called jacques he made a mechanical duck that can do almost everything a duck can almost everything a duck can that you can do a lot of things and it had um, you know that can be called one of the first robots or mechanical devices that can replicate uh, actions of a human being so Uh, that was one of the modern instances of robots and you actually have a picture of it and a drawing of it but the actual thing is lost and then uh, when we get to 1800s there was a robotic doll which could uh, draw and uh, write things in english or french and uh, all those things so uh, all these mechanical devices they can replicate human actions or you know animal actions these have been existing for a long time people have been fascinated by these things for a while but um, these are all you know you can call it predecessors of robots but they don't really have much in um, you know much in comparison with what the modern door robots could do and uh, you know, we'll get to that uh, hopefully as uh, through as we get through this presentation um the whole concept of robot um of the modern day robot or the word robot all of these were introduced by a playwright called um, capek where he used the word robot or robota and a check play Uh, he used that word where uh, the robots were false labor basically you know he made those uh, characters as you know machines that will do labor and the hard work that people didn't want to do and which is essentially the uh, the concept of robots why we build robots or why we are aspiring to build robots is to take away a lot of these unwanted unnecessary mechanical tasks away from humans so that we can actually do the things we like and enjoy and all that and we don't need these forced um, labor or we don't need this hard manual labor which has to be done by people again um, coming again to back to popular culture uh, if you have read books or seen movies uh, there is this famous concept called the three laws of robotics which was again introduced by another writer where he actually used the term robot or robotics and uh, came up with the rules that robots has to follow this these three rules are you know this arbitrary rules it's a, a writer fiction writer came up with it but still uh, these rules are uh, kind of still considered one of the cardinal rules of robotics even when people design robots now they're kind of supposed to you know abide by these rules and the main rule is robots should not harm a person robots should wipe obey people and the robot should you know keep persevere and uh, make sure its own existence is not threatened and it's very simple basic rules and this comes up in movies a lot but again uh, these are rules that were kind of made up by a writer okay so uh, before we kind of get into what robots are we have to get a general sense of what robots are and what they do and uh, unfortunately when we hear robots at least for indians when we hear robots Uh, what we see a lot of times what we think of robot is uh, what we the idea we get from movies and this is one of these gross um, <laughs> cinematic depictions of robots that i really hate personally because uh, you know this is very unrealistic this is uh, this is nothing but visual effects and uh, for visual effects and all that it's got no uh, no connection to reality at all and um, even in this um, 
this uh, this movie it, they are you know they are just, just a over inflated imagination of robots even these things all of these are supposed to be robots and if you think about it the physics of it all to have a head that has so many connections turned around like this is impossible the wiring must be going crazy right and uh, even the main robot um, the guy who is supposed to be is supposed to be acting like a robot but even this is you know gross depiction of over acting depiction of robots is so Uh, unrealistic so this is not at all what a robot is this is not how they act this is not how they behave this is this has no connection to reality at all now um if you move away from that and to a more you know western cinematic depiction of robots this is from this very famous movie i robot so this is the, you can call it a more realistic more realistic i would never say this is a realistic robots cannot do any of these things they cannot move like this they do not exhibit such fluid motion or any of these things so the uh, robots in a sense are not what movies want you to believe but you know maybe some day this is what robots can do and that we may get to that point some day but uh, we are nowhere close to any of these right now robotics is a combination of innovation and application so some application in with some application in mind people design some innovative things so uh, this is one of the most uh, advanced uh, robotics that exists today and uh, as you can see uh, robots come in a lot of variety of types and sizes and a lot of times they mimic nature okay so these robots are shaped like ants and they can Uh, kind of do what ants can do with a uh, this thing. This is a robot that, yes, you can see, kind of resembles a butterfly and does what that does, basically Excuse fly. Me, sir. So, Excuse yes, me, yes. Sir, the slide, the first slide, then I am going to cut it. Ah, yo, I'm just going to. Ah, okay. Let me. Okay, now it is moved. Oh, now it moved. Okay. Ah, I don't. Now it has changed. Okay, so you do not see any of those things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I will just start from this slide, hopefully. and that should work still first slide did it go into a presentation mode uh it is not in the presentation mode but the slide has changed okay that doesn't mean i think let me let me just try this again okay uh, i i did show you some slides but those are not important it doesn't matter okay my talk should have sounded so ridiculous without the slides but let's try this again is it is it at least moving it is moving yeah it is moving it is moving okay fine i i don't know what's happening but we will kind of have it's to okay now it's okay now we'll well it's it's not supposed yes. to work like this but let's ah, now it is uh, okay you know. okay fine um okay so you it's somehow not going into presentation mode i don't know why okay fine Mm, fine i'll i'll go through that again um i'm i'm sorry about this i don't know what is happening unfortunately but It's okay. It's okay, sir. Continue with the. Okay. So, um, so I unfortunately have to say all those things again. But like I said, uh, these movie depictions of robots, this is not really what robots are. This is not what robots do, and um, this is very, very unrealistic uh, way of looking at robots or thinking about robots. So, um. okay so all of these all of these uh, you know all of these actions that movies try to tell us that robotics does or robots does this is not really how any of these things work it should not it should not you know a head cannot turn like this it's physically and practically mechanically it's all impossible right Uh, so you know this is the indian depiction of robots which uh, was you know destroyed by a couple of those movies that had robots in indian movies so i can think of three but that's pretty much it that has robots in indian movies um now this uh, coming to this this is a more western um western um, outlook of robots western movies hollywood movies this is how they like to show it they have obviously have better graphics they obviously have better vfx and all those things so they have you know better better technology but again even this is not really robotics this is um this is just uh, imagination and vfx so it's got nothing to do with the real world robots okay so let's move on so um what i'm trying to show here is some uh, you know more uh, current examples of robotics uh, this is uh, this is more along the lines of what exists out there today uh, these are robots that mimic insects 
uh, and uh, here again we have a robot that mimics uh, birds or other flying creatures so if you even look at the shape of these robots they look very very similar to the actual you know being so uh, again this is a dragonfly like robot so it's exactly mimicking the wing wing span wing action of a dragonfly but as you can see it's quite big quite big it's not as small as uh, the actual thing again another robot that uh, mimics a uh, kangaroo that uh, uses the basic jumping motion and all those things so um what you i want you to take home from this is robotics as of now a lot of these robotics is borrowing from nature it's it's copying what nature does because nature has had all these millions and billions of years to perfect all these actions so it's kind of hard to improve upon that if you want to copy those motion okay so um, this is an array of robots that is offered by this company called Boston Dynamics. Boston Dynamics is one of those, uh, you know, one of the most famous uh, robotics research group. It's not a, it's not a robot manufacturing company per se, but it's more of a robot research organization. Uh, now, if you can, if you can see, uh, you can clearly see these are mimicking animals, right? Uh, this uh, doesn't quite look like an animal, but they have basically uh, modeled this robot on a dog. And these are kind of designed to interact with the world and our our world, how the way we have set up the world, our home and environment and all those things. It's mimicking those things. Um, now, this is a pretty ingenious robot. It combines the biped uh, structure of a human being and it combines with that wheel, one of the most ingenious inventions we have come up with as humans. So uh, combining those two things, it can uh, perform a lot of actions that we normally cannot and you know a lot of uh, things it can do which is because of this combination of a wheel and the biped uh, you know two legged design of a human being so that's another uh, design uh, that uh, these people have come up with and uh, like i said it can do a lot of ingenious things that we normally cannot do and of course it, it's, it's you know it's supposed to um, help us so it, obviously it is supposed to be able to do something lift weights and all that okay um a pr pretty acrobatic robot, if you ask me. So it's it's um, very interesting the way they designed it. Okay, so now this uh, this robot that they call the Wildcat is one of the fastest robots out there. It's designed on the actions or the or the running motion of a cheetah, which is the fastest running animal, and um, it can run pretty fast. If you, if you look at the robot running, it can thirty two kilometers per hour is pretty fast for a for a robot to do. And it basically mimics all these running actions of uh, small and uh, big cheetahs and all these actions. So uh, this is a uh, robot that they call Big Dog. And it's basically designed to carry large um, weights for soldiers. Right When they have to you know, go into any terrain, they usually have to carry these uh, heavy, heavy packs with them. And this is designed to take some of that uh, weight off them. And this is just going to follow the soldiers wherever they go. It can, as you can see, it can you know, handle itself pretty well on a lot of these terrains. Okay, now this Atlas is a human mimicking robot. It's designed like a, it's designed like a human. Designed to work like a human, act like a human, uh, perform functions like a human. Right, we're not um, there yet, but uh, it can do a lot of things that uh, even humans cannot do. And it's uh, sure it's clumsy, and it's uh, you know slightly unwieldy. But it's uh, for a robot, for a machine, it's doing these flips, backflips pretty amazingly well, if you ask me. Right, um, there's not a lot of humans even that can do this backflip. And see how it's balancing. It's it's balancing exactly how a human being would balance itself, if it had to, you know, in a balance from a fall. Okay, so um, these are you know some of the some of the examples of robots out there. Oh, okay. Uh, so based on what you saw, I want you to re examine Of course, you didn't see the slide before, so that helps. So based on what you saw, um, a robot can be a machine that resembles a human being and you know able to replicate certain actions, certain human moments. And that is kind of where we are. We are not really able to, you know, replicate all the moments of a human, obviously. You can only replicate, you know, few, some of these moments. Okay. It's an electromechanical device that can be reprogrammable, multifunctional, and obviously the main point is that it's sensible for the environment. It has to be able to interact with the environment nicely. Okay. And it's an artificially intelligent device with sensing and attribution. So these are the many ways you can define what a robot is. But unfortunately, there cannot be one single you know, definition for a robot, which is not really possible at all. And um, 
and if you look at the world of robotics there are uh, there are so many different varieties of robots so many shapes so many sizes so many functions so many so many varieties of robots that exist out there and it's really hard to classify robots into any any meaningful classifications but of course we we love to classify things so we still try to classify robots into a few different classes and if you ask me my personal you know my personal outlook at how robots is classified is like this um so you basically have four i mean again like i said uh, this is not the only way you can classify robots there are so many different ways you can classify robots this is just one you know one sensible way of looking at all the different robots out there okay so um one of the first types of robots is the industrial robots so that basically means the robots that exist in industry or the robots that are used in industry and when i say industry uh, i more specifically mean manufacturing industry of some sort okay so um uh, industrial robots uh, is one of the main types of robots the next you can call the mobile robots mobile robots are any robots that can move you know based on legs or wheels or uh, any of these things uh, or you know tracks any of these things can be called mobile robots then uh, technically you can put flying robots under mobile robots because you know flying is also mobile but uh, flying robot you know it's a slightly different variation of robots and you obviously seen seen all the drones that people are flying around these days you know any any marriage that you go to you have a you have a drone because there's no marriage videos without drone although, you know now we've not been had <laughs> elaborate once anymore right so drones or flying robots can be another class and one of the most important class or the you know the class that we all recognize as robots is humanoid robots and those are robots that are designed to look like humans okay they don't necessarily act like humans because we are not um, you know able to make robots that can do that yet but they uh, more or less look like humans they you know they have the basic humanoid shape with the body to arms head to legs that sort of shape they replicate so that is a humanoid robot okay so um this is like i said a very uh, you know very limited way of dividing robots but it's it's one of the more effective practical ways of looking at robots and how they function in the world right now so industrial robots so there are obviously a lot of different types of robots that can comes under it cartesian robots cylindrical robots pick and place robots these are robots that you know stay in one place and do something um like 3d printers you can think of 3d printers as a sort of robot it is and if you think if you've seen a 3d printer or the way it works it has a thing that moves in 3d space and basically does you know uh, printing it basically deposits material on top of uh, a plate so that is kind of how um all these robots work cartesian cylindrical they're all basically they are you know some sort of a moving system that moves on a single point and then goes around to a few places that's something or the other and most of these robots um, as we will see is uh, used in industry and mobile robots or robots like i said they can move and they usually usually they have wheels sometimes they have tracks wheels and track work very similarly so wheels is easy Like you think of autonomous cars, um, uh, that's basically a wheel robot, and then they have leg robots like the ones we saw, the ones that were replicated in dogs and all that. Uh, we have those kind of robots, and even in those, we have you know biped, triped, quadruped robots, which is you know two legs, three legs, uh, four legs, and uh, you have multiped, which means basically a lot of legs. So there are hexaped ones which uh, use six legs, and there are some robots that use even more. and the swimming robots or water bound robots are also kind of classified as removable robots like submarines they go under water or they can you know i think of a robotic boat that can move on top of water uh, even they would technically come under uh, these uh, mobile robots okay so like i said there's a very very you know rough classification of robots but it's a it's a good way to think about um, robots when you think of them practically this is a pretty decent way to think about robots okay so um first we come to industrial robots and uh, we get to this because this is industrial robots is one of the most advanced field of you know area of robotics that exists out there um this is was the first class of the first type of robots that developed this is the first type of robots that people worked on this is um, this is one of the most important important type of robots out there and um uh, they are the most used the most 
most of the robots, about 70, 80% of the robots that are produced today, actually, you know, produced in a, a more commercial sense of production, they're all um, industrial robots. Okay, and these, um, as you can see, they don't look like robots at all. They don't, they don't have the look or feel or appearance or the characteristics of any robots that you think about when you hear the term robots. But they, again, like I said, based on the basic concept of robots, these are, you know, these are, uh, these are also robots. Uh, because why they they can do an action that a human can do, and they basically help humans do a certain action. They are mechanical. They have sensors, um, and you know they are reprogrammable. They respond to the environment. Because of all those things, these are all robots. So uh, that is one of those things that I want you to understand. Robotics is such a multi interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary field that combines so many different things. And um, and like I said, eighty percent of the robots that exist today look like this. Um, they are one of the most used type of robots. Um, they are one of the most produced type of robots. They are probably the only type of robots that are commercially implemented. None of these other other fancy things that you see are out there. Not they're not there except for the news value of things. Um, but these are the most commercially implemented uh, type of things. One of the main features of these robots is that they are stationary. I mean, not stationary as in they don't move, they, but they don't move from place to place. They are fixed in one place. And they have arms that move to do or accomplish some task or the other. Okay. Um, what they usually have is a robotic arm. So you can technically call these robotic arms, uh, but industrial robots, even in industrial robots, about 70 percent of industrial robots itself are robotic arms. So basically they are an arm. Just think of your arm, uh, right? Your arm can uh, move in so many different directions, so many different angles it can move in. So it has a shoulder, your arm has a shoulder, it has a knee, um, elbow joint, and it has a wrist. And then of course it has fingers that can also move in different directions. So using these one, two, three joints, basically all you're using is three joints, right? Shoulder joint, uh, elbow, and a wrist. Wrist can Pretty much, you know, do a 360 rotation, not fully, but, you know, some people are there who can do it. Uh, this other elbow joint, if you think about it, just moves in one direction, right? You can move up and down, up and down, that's it. And even a shoulder joint is pretty flexible. It can do a 360 degree motion. So just based on these three motions, you can move your arm anywhere, in any direction you want. Think of all those people who do amazing things with their arms. And, you know, they can move their arms in so many different ways, so many different directions. You can basically, you can... You know, go from having your arms from scratching your head to grabbing a bottle exactly where the bottle is. You can you can move it in so many different directions and so many different ways. So that is almost exactly what these robotic arms try to replicate. Most of these robotic arms also come with the three basic joints, like our shoulder joint, um, elbow joint, and a final joint. Although you know they don't display as much motion as our shoulder joint. Our shoulder joint can move in all. 360 directions, but usually these robotic arms have joints that just move like your elbow joint in just one direction. They move up and down. And combining those motions, these robotic arms can also almost go in any direction. And uh, usually they have an end joint. Uh, depending on the type of robot and the type of, type of arm, obviously, there are there are robots that can do more actions and they have more range of motion. And they accomplish it by... Um, adding more joints. Our arm basically has about you know three joints and that is fixed. The robots can have multiple joints. So there are uh, you know robotic arms that have five, six joints and they exhibit very very complex motion and they can move in a lot of different directions. Okay, and they have degrees of motion. Basically, it, you know degrees of motion says you know how much they can move, what direction they can move, and all that. Um, one of the main features of this uh, this sort of robotic arms. One of this. Uh, all these robotic arms have what you call an end effector. So like our fingers, right? Our fingers are very flexible. You can do a lot of different things with it. But robots usually have an end effector or some sort of attachment at the end, the very end of this thing, which is uh, used to do some task. So this will be task specific. You can only do, usually you can only do one task with these robotic arms. They are programmed for one specific task and that is all they can do. Okay. So um, let's move on to the next slide, hopefully. Okay. Okay, so uh, um, types of industrial that are obviously, like I said, there are you know subclassifications of industrial robots. Now, if you look at uh, this particular robot uh, right there, uh, the end of this robot, the very end of this robot, is what actually does the task. Everything else, everything else is just there for motion. How to move the robot around, how to get it to where you want it to be. 
okay so the end effect is, is what it does so uh, one of the uh, one of the most commonly used type of end effector is a pick and place type of end effector so it means it can pick something up and place it somewhere nammal kai vechittu saane eduthu maati vekkunna pole that is exactly how it works it can pick something up place it somewhere else pick something up place it somewhere else that is pick and place robot okay so the end effector will be something that is similar to our fingers but won't be like fingers but basically it will be like pincers you know think of a tweezer kind of thing it will have the both that sort of thing two things which will open and close and that is what it used to pick and place something somewhere so picking is done by the end effector placing somewhere else is done by moving the robot again okay that is one of the basic uh, uh, types of industrial robots another one uh, which is commonly used is a welding robot mostly used in uh, you know manufacturing industries and again more specifically car manufacturing industries so what it does is it does welding you know the robotic arm can move to where it wants and then uh, the welding happens um another type of robot is called a collaborative robot and um, to explain what a collaborative robot is we have to understand what these other robots are they can do one specific thing like i said they can only do that one a certain action they can do nothing else but the collaborative robot is a robot that is more or less designed to work with a human um if you look at the picture on the bottom right that is showing the example of a collaborative robot where this robot is handling a soldering iron and this person is basically uh, pointing to where he wants to solder and the robot just solders it so all these other type of industrial robots they are designed to work without humans so they will keep doing the task and they have no human interaction they need no human interaction and usually there should not be any people around when these uh, robots are doing what they are supposed to do but these collaborative robots are more intuitive and they can interact with human beings and do more uh, you know collaborative work so basically it's like a collaboration between a human and robot and those are those are pretty new very rare um, they don't really exist outside um, you know scientific research facilities but uh, that is also another type of robot industrial robot that is coming up and the last type of industrial robot is automated manufacturing so automated manufacturing is a combination of several robotic arms and other systems like a conveyor belt other sensors so it's basically a large scale you know large scale industries large scale of, like i said again auto manufacturers are what use these robots the most so that is uh, what these uh, industrial manufacturing things do so they use a large set of it's not like one single thing or one single robotic arm or one single piece but it's like a combination of several machines and several systems that uh, you know make something automatic automatically so if you if you think about any of these you know daily things that you consume like like just for example things of think of uh, chips right uh, think of potato chips like glaze potato chips that you use for the most part almost you know 80% of these uh, chips manufacturing is done automatically there is almost no human interaction except you know even from dumping the potatoes into one thing uh, all the way up to coming out as a packed product it's all automated so those sort of things is what i call automated manufacturing where a huge process going on and that process has many different parts okay So let's um, uh, let's look at uh, some of these uh, industrial robots. Um, this is uh, what I call a pick and place robot. So it's picking something up, placing somewhere else. And in this case, it's using pick and place by using some sort of vacuum sort of thing. And uh, this is again another uh, pick and place uh, action that is going on. and it's lifting some heavy heavy barrels, right? So if you had to have a human doing this action, this would be very complicated. and uh, look at what it's doing it has a circular uh, thing and there's an arm that moves in to hold the robot again another pick and place robot uh, so it's picking something up uh, and placing it into a cart so it's you know doing that six bottles at a time and it can also you know pick and place things in a very very specific way very very arranged and ordered way um another pick and place robot again uh, moving cement bags i believe and also it can do very precise actions like handling eggs and all that it can do that okay so now uh, this is more of an example of a manufacturing plant this is a manufacturing car manufacturing plant and uh, you can see how that uh, automated systems are working together to do something is basically working on some engine block so you know a lot of picking and placing is going on a lot of welding goes on a lot of soldering goes on 
a lot of these actions goes on and it's also uh, you know moving along a conveyor belt and even that conveyor belt has other systems that do stuff and if you see there are almost no humans in this whole thing there are you know, no human interactions nobody is doing so this is painting something doing sort of a spray painting action and it's again placing that car part exactly where it needs to be this is some you know um, ball tightening going on tightening balls so this is an example of a robotic manufacturing unit so again like i said it's a you know combination of a lot of robotic arms and other systems and like i said it's it's doing everything on its own there is almost no human interaction going on that is um, you know and finally a human obviously there will be people around monitoring things and uh, these people are you know sitting somewhere on a uh, on a desk seeing what task is being completed how much of it is being completed and that is mostly all that needs to be done of course uh, you know these robots need to be trained by humans initially uh, these robots need to be trained by humans and you know they have to they have to be taught what to do but once that you know teaching process is done once that is you know settled these can just keep doing it on its own okay so those um, there are some examples of uh, industrial robots which like i said is one of the most um, one of the most used one of the most important types of robots out there okay now we move on to mobile robots um, mobile robots are more exciting um, obviously and uh, in the picture what you see is the mars rover and that is that is one of the most famous mobile robots out there and um, this is this is an ideal ideal typical example of the use for a robot in all these other areas all these other spaces you know where we saw the robots being used in this and all that technically a person can do it but in this case like exploring mars there is no environment uh, there is no air to breathe there is you know severe climatic conditions there is severe heat severe cold you know, unknown environment unknown dangers so many so many variables are out there and it's pretty much impossible for a human to do any of these things so this is the ideal uh, situation where you would use a robot so you can take the robot leave it there you don't have to worry about any of these things and the robot if properly designed can do all the explorations that a person can do obviously not everything is not intuitive so many so many problems are there but this is one of the ideal situations where you would see a robot being used where people cannot do it and you know you take the robot there leave it there it can you know go around it can move where it wants and it can uh, do a lot of scientific research that we can sit here and analyze and of course it's a lot cheaper to send a robot and once it's done you don't have to go back to pick up the robot you can just leave it there and you know it's fine so um you know one of the one of the most um, you know most famous robots that exists the mars rover um and you know obviously they did uh, send one of those newer rovers out there so there's a new one out there there's an old picture of the old rover so mobile robots um, as the name suggests are not stationary they can move from one place to another they can you know they can actually move they can and, and this is not just you know just moving forward backward left right it's you know actually going from one place to another so those are usually that um, that sort of action that you know we perform with a car or something and um, all of these can move obviously and um, it includes a wide variety of robots like i said uh, you know a lot of lot of different types of robots come under this section and they also obviously come in a lot of different shapes and sizes so the shapes and sizes are you know it, it means it doesn't have to look like a car it doesn't have to you know look like anything that you recognize that can move but uh, in like i like i showed you in the first video a lot of different shapes and sizes can have a mobile robot like the one rover that was shaped like a kangaroo that is exactly a mobile robot but it doesn't you know look like anything that you have seen it doesn't have wheels it doesn't have tracks it you know it can but it can still move so it's technically a mobile robot and it also has a lot of applications so you know um, an autonomous car is just one type of mobile robot right it's it's a car that can drive itself but that is such a limited way of looking at mobile robots you can you can use it for so many other applications um usually they move on land air and water like i said flying rovers are just you know putting flying rovers in there although uh, technically you can call it a drone and call it different class and just clubbing it in there uh it can move on air land and water it can you know move on the water over water on land on air and all those things and uh, there are robots that are specifically designed to be indoor or outdoor and uh, usually the design is different because uh, the challenges are uh, very different indoor and outdoor ones okay 
Okay, so unfortunately this animation is not going to work, so I'm going to have to physically move these pictures and I'm sorry about that. Um, there are many types of wheel robots. Uh, the first one, all autonomous vehicles, that uh, all of those come under mobile robots, okay. So this is the picture of um, uh, Venmo, the famous Google car that they're developing, the autonomous car that Google is developing. So this is basically a car that can drive itself like a robot on normal roads. Um, obviously we don't, we are not talking about Indian roads uh, because the robot would go crazy trying to navigate our roads. Uh, but this is basically, uh, you know, in the more structured sort of traffic. That's where we use these type of robots. In. Okay, so uh, wheel robots is the, you know, autonomous cars. So many, so many companies are trying to develop autonomous cars out there. Uh, Tesla is the, doing it. IBM. Any any car manufacturer you can think of, they're developing an autonomous car these days. Okay, so that is one of the first um, first types of uh, mobile robots. And uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. So the next one is uh, transportation. So uh, transportation doesn't necessarily mean cars. You can use it to transport anything and everything. So in this picture, what you see is these tiny, tiny little um, rectangular boxes. And if you have shelves that are designed for these robots, basically you can move anything around. So think of a large warehouse where you need to move things. And uh, you can basically just use these robots directly in those warehouses to just move things around. As long as you know everything is designed for them, they can have no human interaction. They'll move onto a shelf and just move the shelf where it wants to. And then you have basically automated moving accomplished. Okay. And uh, rovers, we talked about rovers. All rovers will uh, come under uh, wheeled robots. Okay, and uh, the next category is biped robots. We kind of saw the video of a biped robot, uh, the one we call Atlas. So basically, they're robots that have two legs and move on two legs. And then there are uh, quadruped robots. Uh, this is the picture of a quadruped robot, which uh, they call Spot. It's again by Boston Dynamics. So it tells basically what it has is four legs, and it moves around like a four-legged animal. And then we have uh, what we call multiped robots. So like I said, uh, Hexa. Hexaped. So this is an example of a hexaped robot, and the and the main advantage of having more legs is balance. It's pretty hard to balance on just four legs. Now, if you have six legs, even when you're moving, you can have at least four on the ground, and this makes it so much easier to move and balance. So this is an example of a quadruped robot that has about um, six legs. Hexaped robot that has about six legs, but again, like I said, you can have um, multiple legs also. And this is the robot of an under example of an underwater robot that moves like a fish. So it, it can swim underwater. It moves along along the same lines as how a fish moves. You know how it moves the tail. Uh, doesn't play. Okay. So it basically moves like a fish. It looks like a fish. And what you can do is that you know you can use it to explore underwater environment without disturbing the life forms or the environment that is there. So imagine you know if you're putting a scuba diver out there trying to videotape things. Obviously, all these fishes and all these things will behave differently because there is you know there is a human being. There is something that they don't recognize out there. Now you put a thing that is shaped like a fish out there, it's just going to blend into the environment and you get a much better, uh, much better understanding of how things work when once, um, you know, once being out there and, uh, you know, all that. So it's, uh, again, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a robot that can be used for underwater exploration, but it's still a prototype. It's, you know, they're being developing it. So basically what they're trying to do is come up with some new ideas. It's not practically used anywhere. But it's again a great example of a water-based robot. Of course, they have you know submarines and the ones that look you know like a normal submarine or a human-based uh, underwater pods. But uh, this is a you know this is a nicer example of an underwater robot. Of course, you can have robots that go over water also. Okay, so these are uh, you know type of the basic basic types of mobile robots. Of course, like I said, there can be so many other types, but um, this is uh, one way of looking at it. Okay, so I don't really have any video of this because it's kind of easy to understand and we covered this already. And now we move on to the humanoid robots. The humanoid robots, like I said, are the robots that uh, look like humans. They uh, look like humans, they work like humans, they act like humans in some cases. But not all of it at once. Um, they, they just, uh, you know, they do some or the other movements of humans. 
The picture on the right that you see is a pretty famous robot called Sophia. I hope you all heard of uh, Sophia. It's it's one of the only machines that has a citizenship. I think um, Dubai Dubai gave it uh, gave Sophia citizenship because it 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 looks and acts almost very very similar to a human. Uh, of course, you can tell that it's a robot, but it's it's pretty close and it's very exciting that uh, robots can do those things. So they look like humans. They can mimic human actions, one or more human actions. They can perform human functions, as in, you know, something that we do, they can do. And they can work in a human environment. Like, for example, if you think about anything that is in your home, anything in your classroom, anything that is in a, you know, in a, in a, any building, they're all designed for humans. Like, if you think about how you want to turn on a fan, right? You have to go from one place to where the switch is, and then press the switch, and then you know, then you can turn on the fan. But if a robot has to work in that environment, this is not an ideal design. For a robot to turn on a fan, ideally, you would have some sort of IoT sort of thing, and they can just set a signal and turn on the fan on. That is how it will be designed. If it is specifically for a robot, but. Um, all of these things that we you know, think of a door, you know, you want to open a door, think of a factory where you have to go and turn a valve or, um, you know, go inspect something or uh, any of those things that you can imagine, any of these human made structures that we have, they're all designed for us to interact with, not ideally for a robot to interact with. For, so robots that can interact with those environments that are designed for humans, they're also um, very, uh, you know, they are also coming under the same category of humanoid robots, and uh, you know they can uh, perform tasks that only humans can. So many things that only we can do, like uh, the robot that I showed you in the beginning, the one that can jump and do acrobatics. Those are you know very specific human things that we do, but these robots can do that. Um, again, humanoid robots are uh, robots that can act, react, and display human-like characteristics, and that is where Sophia comes in. This um, robot, the one we call Sophia, it doesn't really do much, uh, but it acts like a human. It can respond like a human. It can, it has a lot of motors in its face, so it can have a lot of facial expressions that look almost, um, almost human. Okay, so that is um, what humanoid robots are. Now let's uh, look at what they can do or what types of robots are out there. Um, so uh, there are very, very simple ones to you know, more or less complex ones that can do actions that range from simple to complex. Um, this is one of those examples of a, of a pure robot that is used in uh, law enforcement. Okay, so this is Sophia that I was talking about. So you, know, you can have a conversation with people. It can, you know, have. You can obviously tell it's a robot, but it looks pretty real. It kind of, you know, looks similar to how a human being would react. And it also has a brain. It has a. It has an AI-based brain that can respond automatically. It's not somebody sitting there and controlling it. Uh, this is Sophia having a date with Will Smith. It's a pretty famous video if you look it up online. And, so uh, that was Sophia. So like I said, it, it can do all of these things on its own, based on its own programming. Now, this is a robot that the Saudi government introduced into its law enforcement. It's basically there to help people. Uh, looks like a cop. It goes around and uh, helps people uh, find things. Now, if you if you want to simplify it, it is basically a touch screen on a moving wheel. That is all it is. It is nothing more than that. But, you know, it can kind of help people like how a human person would, uh, you know, sit there and help people, which is why this is interesting. Also, you remember there was a news article about how the, you know, Kerala police force has something like this, which I believe is basically a robot that looks like a human and does a salute. That is basically all it does. But um, again, technically, when we talk about it, it comes under human and robots. Um, like I said, they have a thing. Now, there's a more interactive type of human robot. Um, if you want to, again, simplify it, it is like an Alexa on wheels. And it has, uh, you know, projection facility, and it has um, um, cameras and all that. But it can, you know, interact with the human world. It, you know, it's kind of like a companion for people. It can, you know, go around, do things, answer questions, interact with kids, uh, do a lot of these things. So again, another type of um, humanoid robot that is out there. One of the more technologically advanced ones that exists. Uh, this one by Toyota is a robot that can replicate human actions. Uh, so there is a person controlling this thing. And he has this rig on him. So basically, whatever action he does, the robot can just replicate it. Just you know, does all those things. Um, obviously, it's not just for doing all these fancy things. There are also a lot of practical applications for this. You can sit somewhere and make this robot do something like this, uh, something that you want. 
again this is not the robot doing it on its own it's somebody controlling it but still um, a pretty pretty amazing human art robot if you ask me so again again a person is controlling it but um, you know you can use it to do, do you know work human work disaster management go into dangerous environments and all that okay now this is one of the more more advanced robots out there uh, by honda it can um, it can do everything that it's doing on its own so there's nobody controlling it it is you know walking like a human it's doing everything based on its sensors and its brain it is not like it can do a lot of actions you cannot do everything uh, you know you can do you or i can do but it's it's um, kind of replicating a human motion pretty accurately of course you can only do things that is programmed to do not not everything but um, you know nice design a very small uh, for for a robot and um, i can it reminds me of the robot in that uh, one malayalam movie that was there based on a you know old person getting a robot uh, similar to that in a way this is a more developed version of the atlas that we saw at the beginning and it's uh, a lot more improved now if you can if you, if you can see it can do a lot more actions you know amazing amazing balancing it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't look like any other robot it's it's the most advanced human art robot that still exists um uh, again it's it's doing limited things it's doing limited actions but imagine once we can combine these sort of uh, these sort of actions with actual uh, brain ai brains that are out there uh, would, would would do some amazing things okay now uh, i want to move on to uh, the more weird weird of robots that are out there and um, i want to show you this because i want you to understand that these classifications that i told you at the beginning that doesn't really mean anything because robots can be of any size any shape any form any function it can do it can do a variety of things and it's supposed to do a variety of things so there are all these weird shaped robots out there that uh, they know doesn't look anything like what you have seen before and that is also how robots should be because you should design these robots for applications in mind yeah that is what you have to do so um a lot of weird uh, looking robots out there uh this one that um, looks like a ball with spikes and it is uh, look how it's moving it's just moving by moving those spikes and you know it just moves forward like that and that is a robot it's a, it's an amazing design it's a brilliant design you don't need wheels or you don't need any of these other things to move you can move like this um um uh, and doesn't look like anything you know it's another uh, bmw shaped robot that uh, moves in very very strange ways it has six legs and uh, he can do some pretty amazing things again it's for the purpose of demonstrating that this can be done uh, it, you know i don't know if there's any practical application for something like this but again it can interact with our environment amazingly well and uh, you know move in well, it's a hexapet so it has six legs it's a very nice example of a robot that uh, probably mimics some organism out there i'm sure but um see how it can move underwater pretty seamlessly and uh, it can also move over water so it's just the amazing thing so whatever uh, design that they've used for these um, propellers it can use it move on land it can move on ice it can move on snow so it's a pretty amphibious robot and a pretty pretty brilliant design if you ask me this is an example of a micro robot now it's is based on very very small sensors and uh, plastic pieces and small piezo electric actuators and uh, uh, thermo electric actuators so it's very small uh, but it can still do a lot of things it's uh, made of many layers and it has batteries power sources and it can uh, do some limited actions but again it's, it's it's leading into a world of micro robotics and it's one of those first steps that we have to take um now this is another robot i i don't think it resembles anything it it copies the movement of a lot of different uh, organisms i believe but this is a robot that can move on land it can move under water and it can also um it can also do a lot of different things i honestly don't know what it's supposed to do and what the purpose could be but again you can think you can think of so many different things that it can do so again uh, it uses many different types of actuators and interacting um, arms to move around the world so um what i want you to take home from that this is that you know it doesn't have to be any particular size or shape it can it can come in a variety of sizes and shapes 
it is not limited to anything it is only limited to your imagination and uh, what you want it to do what the application you are thinking of is and uh, what you can actually do so um, it doesn't have to be in any shape size or form so whenever you say you know somebody has a robot or somebody has made a robot you know don't think of just humanoid things okay um this is the only technical slide i have this whole presentation um the, uh, the basic robot has three main parts okay the three main parts are sensors actuators and controls so these are the three main parts of a robot of course you know this is broad definition of it so sensor is something that it uses to sense uh, what is around you so i uh, think of yourself right but well, you have sensors you have so many sensors on your body but the more the main one that you use is obviously your sight or your vision which you used to see things um of course you have ears you have uh, arms you have uh, skin on your arms you have uh, uh, nose you have a tongue you have all those different sensors but uh, when we are talking about in terms of robot uh, sensors mostly resemble our eyes or they try to replicate the movement of our eyes and most common sensors used in robots are cameras uh where you know you record things and try to get information from that ultrasound sensors they use ultrasound to um gauge distance and uh, what is around it and then there are lidar based sensors which are laser based sensors so they have um, also a mapping sort of functionality so all these type of sensors basically try to do the function our eyes to to you know see the world around them and see where they're going where they have to go and all that actuators are things that can perform some action um now in robots mostly most of the time is some sort of a motor that can rotate and you know translate that rotation into linear motion then there are obviously pneumatic uh, actuators or hydraulic actuators which you know you can think of the robotic arms that they move the arm then they are they usually use some sort of hydraulics or pneumatics for it those are the most common actuators that are um, that are out there for robotics and the last and final part is control where you have to control these actions okay well, these controls can be done by computers processors and obviously code that we write so we basically have to tell them what to do but the actuation itself is done by um, processors and controllers and uh, ai um, artificial intelligence uh, that becomes a major major part of robotics because all these robots that you saw of sofia or the akismo by the honda one they all basically work of artificial intelligence because that is the only thing that can kind of you know even remotely mimic our human actions so um that is one of the main main portions of course you can have other things like the body manipulators and defectors um, navigation the special things for navigation and all that so um all that norm is standing these are the three main areas of robotics sensors actuators and control which is uh, you know seeing things doing things and uh, thinking about what to do and how to do it so this is all the just these three things you can make up a basic robot okay so um uh, you know uh, talking about robotics in the future of robotics and you know the practicality of robotics uh, there are obviously a lot of lot of robotics companies out there not not a lot uh, in our country unfortunately most of these are foreign companies uh but these are some of the more famous robotic manufacturers out there funk was the one we saw in the video the definitely see some kuka robotics out there abb is a pretty famous one Okay, so uh, a lot of different you know purely robotic manufacturing companies on top of other you know smaller companies that do small robotics and other research one these are the industrial robotic manufacturers that are out there and um, these robots are uh, used by a lot of different industries and if you look at uh, this uh, you'll see that almost all of these are car manufacturing companies and that is why i said um, in the beginning that uh, you know most of the robots that we see in practical commercial use are industrial robots and most of them are used by car manufacturing companies they are the only ones that have automated possibly the, uh, but of course there are a lot of food manufacturing companies and smaller ones that uh, use robotics but most of these are uh, car manufacturing companies nowadays it's changing a lot of companies are doing the automated manufacturing step okay um we are getting to the end of our presentation um so applications are vast and wide for robotics any anything you can think of can have a robotic application um is, like i said it's only limited by your imagination but these are some of the possible um, you know future applications of uh, robotics they're all you know ro the application of robotics is coming up in all these fields but you know not very widespread or popular but um so many so many possible fields these are just some of the fields that um, you can think of but um, anything you can like i said anything you can think of can have a robotic application 
just need to have the technology to, to design the robot and to you know implement what you want um and to actually work in robotics uh, there is no one thing that you can study although you know now there are courses that specifically deal with robotics even when you say you have a course that teaches you robotics it's basically teaching you a bunch of different fields because robotics like i said is a combination of so many different fields okay so the some of the some of the fields that you can work in or even if you work in robotics you can have you know a specialization in that and you can have work on a specific thing and some of the knowledge that you require that you can get you into robotic field is basic pc hardware programming electronics base electronic circuits motors and controls microcontrollers programming power electronics mechanical design drawing uh, material sciences mechanical manufacturing uh, tools um, so many so many things that you can know and still get into a robotic related field and work on robotics um and of course once you do you or might be expected to know all of these things okay so to end at the end my presentation i'm going to try and hopefully inspire you by showing you one of the only robotics company that is from our own state uh they're pretty famous they're called um, uh they have, they made a robot called the bandicoot uh, if you have heard of it it's a company based out of trivandrum uh they basically made a robot that can uh, clean a sewage tank so it does uh, it is one of those dirty nasty jobs that used to be done by people and it's pretty unhuman conditions very dangerous conditions and uh, these people uh, made uh, this whole company out of uh, making a robot that can uh, do this uh do this manhole cleaning automatic automatically so if you think of the design as pretty simple um it has a uh, in a dash an arm that goes down picks up stuff and uh, brings it back up but uh, what it can do uh, in terms of lifestyle improvement and uh, for the person is that it can take a person that used to have to go down into a drain and you know do this cleaning manually um now this person can just be a operator who produces Uh, who operates the robot and can simply um you know simply operate the robot instead of having to do this uh, nasty job manually okay so um that brings us to the end of my presentation i hope you understood something or got something out of it um i am um, i'm sorry about again the presentation not working i have no idea what is going on uh, but um well, thank you for listening to me i hope you understood something or got some knowledge information out of this um, i try to keep it within the time that was given to me which is on art so i hope we have some time for some interactive session uh, so please feel yes, free to ask me anything i'll try to answer it if i know the answer to it i'll try and answer it. students now we have an interactive session you can ask some questions some of the students have studied some arduino software and uh, uh, right 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 yeah so all of that comes under um, comes under the controlling part of robotics so yeah. microprocessors um, you know that's what you yeah. used to do the programming in yeah uh they can control light something they have done some right, project, right. Uh, projects yeah, yeah. arduino is arduino is one of the uh, you know one of those most project based uh, things are very very easy to use and uh, yeah A pretty pretty amazing thing for the for the price it's it's an amazing little device. Uh, even so can students so can ways. study that and do some projects using right, it. Right, right. I think. Yeah. yeah, I think nowadays you know when you say project, at least in engineering colleges, you have to use an Arduino. Everybody uses an Arduino, even if they don't need an Arduino, they still use an Arduino because it's become such a standard thing. Yeah. And how long it will take to get a robot which can do all uh, the functions of the humans uh, ah yeah, madam i yeah, that is that is that is the million dollar question i who, <laughs> who knows right who knows um the probably you know uh, 30 50 years uh, we we might see act some amazing robots doing things because see, because of this quantum computer and all these quantum computing developments that are coming up um mm. artificial artificial intelligence once it this quantum computer is out there yeah, yeah, it will really, speed up the process uh, it will do a lot of things so right now the problem we see is uh, miniaturization like we cannot fit all of the things that we need into the small space that we need like there are not enough small products okay. so these arms when you, when i say actuators all these you know motors and pneumatic controllers that you need to move these things they are very big 
so okay. that is one of the major issues they are all mechanical now, devices you know, they are all mechanical devices so you know now they're and they're not they don't have very smooth you know smooth nice motion like we know yeah. so hopefully you know 50 years we might see something great who knows okay thank you sir mm-hmm. yeah no problem no problem okay if you don't have any questions we'll move on to out of thanks now i invite amrita lakshmi of us dc physics and coordinator of this program to propose the word of thanks amrita good morning all yes. good morning all i have been called upon with the honor of delivering the word of thanks to our esteemed guests and the task force backstage that made this workshop a grand success while i consider this a vital part of any program several of you are eager to hear more from dr uh, yohansa and i too listen to you unfortunately all good things must come to an end temporarily at least and let's call this and until next time in the hopes that we see more of them soon dr yohansa nis has set an unprecedented and exemplary record of knowledge experience as well as his simplified method of teaching Sir, in all sincerity, thank you for everything that you passed on to us in this short period. Robotics is not a field that I was previously interested in. Frankly, I was not aware of uh, its opportunities that the future held in its sector as I am now. Thank you, sir, for opening a new door to us. On behalf of all students and staff, I convey my profound gratitude to you for giving us a share of your invaluable time and hope. that we are unfortunate enough to interact more with you in due course moving on to a special mention and applause to the crew that worked hard behind the stage first to dr sheena sevia our hod and iqac coordinator and ms dhanya jose for their constant toil in laying out all only the best for their students thank you to our iedc coordinators dr sherina uh, john and revati s on behalf of everyone i can convey my appreciation and gratitude and finally to my supporting hand and vanessa thank you to top top it all it cannot be ignored how wonderful an audience you have been we are obliged to every one of you for your kind and patient attention once again a grand salute to dr yohan sir we welcome you sir in advance to our humble institution on more such occasions Thank you and have a wonderful day. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Amrita. The meeting has come to an end. Students can leave. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Yohan, sir. Okay, madam. Thank you. Ma'am. All right. Ma'am.